this class, we will improve the user experience and the overall vibe of this to-do's application. What I mean by saying that we're going to add different sound effects and haptic feedback to this Swift UI app. Let's see how it sounds when we tack on the new task item button. It's an excellent chime, isn't it? Now let's enter a new task item and listen to the next sound effect. It's the same chime because I wanted the add button and the save button sound to be identical. However, if you decide to change the app's appearance from light to dark, then listen to this new sound. Can you hear the difference? Next. Now let's check out some task items from the to-dos list, shall we? See? There it goes. That's what I'm talking about. We hear a sound effect that gives us positive feedback when we accomplish a task item from the list. Now let's listen to the sound effect when we uncheck a list item. It's different now. Let's try it out again. Perfect. By the end of this tutorial, our Devote application will get more value by adding different kinds of sound effects and haptic feedback. That being said, let's launch Xcode and start coding along with me. First of all, we will create a new utility file for the sound player and reuse it as many times as we wish later on. Select the utility group from the project navigator and let's create a new Swift file. Give it the name sound player and save it into this folder. In order to create a sound player, we have to import the audio video foundation framework, so let's do it. Enter. Import, AV foundation. Now we can create a new audio player. Enter. Var. Audio player. Type of AV audio player. Question mark. After that, we will create a new function to run each time when we want to play a sound effect. Function. Play sound. Sound. String. Type. String. Great. Now we need to create a new path property. Enter the following code. If. Let. Path. Equals. Bundle. Dot main dot path for resource sound of type type with this code we can add the necessary sound file to the audio player that we want to play to do that safely in the swift programming language we need to use proper do try catch error handling enter this code do audio player equals try av audio player contents of url file url with path path audio player question mark play catch print could not find and play the sound file this is one of the best methods to play any selected sound file from the local app bundle. And we will use it all over the place in this lesson. Playing sound files. To play a sound file first, we need to open the content view file. After that, please scroll down to the appearance button and let's run our new function. Enter. Play sound, 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 tap, type, mp3. OK, the first sound effect is done. Now we will speed up this process and more sound effects here and there in this project. Please navigate to the new task button section and let's add a new action to it. Enter. Play sound, 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 ding, type mp3 
Great. We're done here. After this, let's open the new task item file and scroll down to the save button. Here, let's add a new action to this button. Play sound. Sound. Sound, ding. Type, mp3. Fantastic. Now, we're going to play a different sound effect when users try to save an empty task. A warning sound will be a perfect candidate to give them feedback about this failed action. That said, let's add a new modifier to this button. On tap gesture. If is button disable. Play sound. Sound. Sound, tap. Type, mp3. Nicely done. We can now jump to the next file. Open the checkbox style file, and let's run the sound player conditionally in the on tap gesture. If, configuration, is on. Play sound, 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 rise. Type, mp3. Else. Play sound, 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 tap. Type, mp3. With this code, we can play different sound effects depending on the status of this checkbox. Testing. After all this work, it's time to test how this new sound player works in action. Let's build and start the application. First, let's tap on the new task button as I do. Super. Now enter a new task item and save it. It's working too. What about witching from light mode to dark mode? Splendid. And finally, let's see how we can play a sound effect conditionally using the checkbox. It works seamlessly without any problem. How cool is that? Haptic feedback. After successfully developing this sound player using the AV Foundation framework, we can finally create the next feature. This time we're going to add some haptic feedback for the application similar to the sound player. To do that, first, we need to open the constant file. Here in the user experience section, we will create a new property. Enter the following code. Let feedback equals UI notification feedback generator. Since this feedback generator comes with a handy method, that's why we can generate different kinds of feedbacks on iPhone devices. To make it happen, first, jump to the content view file, and let's add a new action to the appearance button. Enter. Feedback. Notification occurred. Success. By running this simple method, we can create either success, warning, or error types of feedback as we wish. Now let's continue adding this feedback three more times. First, scroll down to the new task button and add a new action to it. Enter. Feedback. Notification occurred. Success. All right. We are done here. Second, we will add new feedback to the save button as well. Enter. Feedback. Notification occurred. Success. And finally, jump to the checkbox style, and let's add the last feedback to the custom toggle element inside the on tap gesture modifier, as I show you. Enter. Feedback. Notification occurred. Success. Awesome job. We have just finished adding two new features to this application. Again. Congratulations. Haptics setting. Just one more thing. The only proper way to test how this haptic feedback generator feature works is to try it out on a physical device. Please make sure that the system haptics is enabled in the iPhone settings. To check it out, first, launch the settings app on your phone. Then open the sound and haptics settings page as I show you. Here, scroll down to the end of the page and make sure the system haptics feature is enabled. 
With that, you're all set to test this new feature on your phone. Alright, I hope that you enjoyed this short lesson, and you are eager to watch the final tutorial. In the last lesson, I will introduce you to the new widget API. Are you ready for more awesomeness? I hope so. Having said that, see you at the class.